we had a special bond, you know. We did. She, yeah, she was my first little one. I remember holding her hands when she was born. I looked at those little fingers, and I remember saying, I, I remember saying to myself, I can see where a parent would walk in front of a train to save their child. Ashley. There wasn't a day that her and I didn't say we loved each other. I'd drop her off at school. She goes, I love you, Mom. I love you, too. She never left the house without telling me she loved me. She never got out of the car without telling me she loved me. And it was the same way with me. Ashley and I were good friends from a very young age. We had this one sleepover in our house where we um, dared each other to yell out the windows that we loved certain boys. Oh my gosh. She went through um, her rebellious spell, I guess. And um, I think she thought her, her parents were very strict compared to her friends. And yeah, we had our rules. Her mentality, I think, was a few grades ahead of us. You know, she wanted to be with the, the older crowd. She hadn't done anything with her friends as far as sleeping over you know, for a while. That particular night, there were three or four girls getting together. So I dropped her off, the car was in the yard, and um, she went in. That night, about 10 o'clock, she called me, and I could hear them, they were just giggling in the back, and, and, and I said, okay, that's when I, we talked, and I said, you make sure you go to bed early, you know, and I'll see you, and I love you, and she, I love you too, Mom. And uh, I guess from what I understand, I no sooner hung up with her is when the knock came at the door. It was when we were in L.L. Bean, we got the phone call. I was walking between classes and um, I just, somebody approached me, I couldn't tell you who it was now, but they said, did you hear Ashley Willette was found dead in a ditch? And I said, no. We received a call uh, from the Scarborough Police Department in indicating that the uh, body of a young lady had been found on the Pine Point Road uh, early that morning. Um, the uh, investigative uh, unit was assembled and we proceeded down to, to Scarborough to initiate the investigation. So you can just imagine, it's February, it's cold, and you think that your daughter's laying out in the middle of the road, alone, you know? It's like just kind of like, you know, I always tucked my kids in at night, covered them with blankets, even when they took a nap on the sofa. I just sat in a rocking chair and just stared at the wall because I didn't, I just didn't know what to do. I couldn't believe it. I just, my, I felt like I was in a, a glass dome and if somebody was going to touch it, I was going to break. So, it was, yeah, I just, it was awful. Those next few days at school were just eerie. You know, once everybody knew and once the reality set in that, you know, Ashley had been murdered, there'd been a murder. We were just juniors in high school. They said that she left in the middle of the night. And I said, no, my daughter does not leave in the middle of the night. She's afraid of the dark. She has the house lit up like a, you know, lighthouse. We have always believed uh, that there are people that know what happened, um, besides the person that committed it, perhaps. There are other people that know information uh, that have chosen for whatever reasons uh, to not come forward with that information. Uh, that has made it especially challenging. I think that's one of the reasons uh, why the case remains unsolved.
She said she was going out for a ride and said she'd be back in an hour. I never saw my sister again. Wondering if the guy next to me knows something. Wondering if the person in the car driving by is the one who did it. I can only say that she's gone at 15. Somebody took her life. Well, I think anything that could bring uh, more resources to, to bear on, on unsolved homicides would be a good thing, um, no question about it. Um, but I can guarantee you that every police officer that has been assigned to homicide over the years, whether it's an active case or an unsolved case, makes a unspoken commitment to that victim. You don't just, you know, you don't just forget. I mean, I had one legislator say to me the last time they went up there is, how long is long enough before you close the case. These are people you love. It's a human being. The thing is this person died. They, were, they, were, they died at the hands of somebody else. The families have a right to know something. I wish she was here. So many times I think about her because she'd be 32. You know, what would she be doing? You know, and just, you know, I just, I see kids, you know, family, friends of ours, who their children are the same age. Now they're starting to have children, you know. But it's okay. Yeah. So you have to, you have to carry on.